Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we will be producing some sulfur trioxide. As a side note, do not attempt this at home. Sulfur trioxide is a highly corrosive fuming compound which forms sulfuric acid vapor on exposure to moisture in the air and improper handling could result in blindness, lung damage, or severe burns. Despite this, it is necessary in the synthesis of thionyl chloride, which I need for some future reactions, so the preparation is necessary. As a short backstory, I have tried synthesizing sulfur trioxide several times with varying results. It is most commonly produced in the lab through the dehydration of sulfuric acid by phosphorus pentoxide. However, phosphorus pentoxide is challenging to obtain from household materials and first requires synthesizing and then burning white phosphorus. There are much more easily obtainable chemicals such as anhydrous copper sulfate and sodium pyrosulfate which will decompose to sulfur trioxide. However, the decomposition does not occur until quite high temperatures. Unfortunately, the temperatures are too high for ordinary borosilicate glassware, so quartz glassware is necessary. Although I have had some success with producing sulfur trioxide through high temperature decomposition of select sulfate compounds, more work is necessary to achieve an efficient setup. The method shown here utilizes the relatively low temperature decomposition of anhydrous tin 4 sulfate to produce sulfur trioxide in ordinary borosilicate glassware. Hydrated tin 4 sulfate cannot be dehydrated by heating, however, so it is necessary to synthesize the anhydrous compound directly. To begin, 20 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid was added to 20 milliliters of tin 4 chloride produced in a previous video. This represents a slight stoichiometric excess of sulfuric acid to ensure all the tin 4 chloride reacts. This reaction is very moisture sensitive, so it is necessary to use the 98% concentrated sulfuric acid that we distilled in a previous video. Once the sulfuric acid was added, the mixture was placed on a hot plate and a reflux condenser was added on top with a gas takeoff adapter. Some tubing was used to connect the takeoff adapter to a suckback trap and then into a beaker of water. The mixture was heated until a steady reflux occurred. As the mixture refluxes, the sulfuric acid reacts with the tin 4 chloride to produce tin 4 sulfate and hydrogen chloride gas, which bubbles and dissolves in the beaker of water. Initially, the tin 4 chloride also liberated dissolved chlorine gas, which remained from the previous synthesis. For obvious reasons, this reaction must be performed in a fume hood. As the reaction proceeded and hydrogen chloride filled the apparatus, the bubbling nearly ceased as the hydrogen chloride was dissolving directly into the water before it could even leave the tube. Interestingly, the sulfuric acid and tin 4 chloride initially formed two layers in the flask as they were immiscible, but as the reaction proceeded, one homogeneous mixture was formed. Despite strong refluxing, the reaction proceeded slowly and took several hours to reach completion. A white material slowly formed in the reaction flask, and the mixture became quite viscous. At one point, suckback did occur, but fortunately the suckback track prevented the water from entering the reaction mixture. After this point, it was actually possible to directly observe the hydrogen chloride dissolving into the water, which was pretty cool. After refluxing for six hours, an appreciable amount of white tin 4 sulfate was present, and the mixture began to produce a dense white fog, suggesting all the tin 4 chloride had been consumed and sulfuric acid was now vaporizing. The apparatus was cooled slightly to stop the sulfuric acid from vaporizing, and then a simple distillation apparatus was set up on the flask. It is important not to fully cool the mixture, as moisture in the air will be drawn back into the flask and reduce the yield. The hot plate was then attached to 240 volts and cranked to begin the decomposition of the tin 4 sulfate. As a side note, sulfur trioxide has a narrow liquid range from 17 to 45 degrees Celsius, so it is necessary to use water around 18 to 20 degrees Celsius to prevent the sulfur trioxide from solidifying in the apparatus. As the reaction was heated, the tin 4 sulfate decomposed into sulfur trioxide and tin 4 oxide. A stoichiometric excess of sulfuric acid was used, so the remaining sulfuric acid also vaporized and distilled over. The flask was heated until the hot plate was glowing to ensure complete decomposition, and then the product was stoppered and the apparatus was allowed to cool. While disassembling the apparatus, the characteristic fuming nature of sulfur trioxide was observed. As the product cooled, it also crystallized to give some beautiful sulfur trioxide crystals. In the end, 12.7 grams of sulfur trioxide was obtained, corresponding to a 46.3% yield based on the starting tin 4 chloride. Theoretically, the tin 4 oxide remaining in the flask could be reduced with carbon back to elemental tin, more tin 4 chloride could be made, and the process could be repeated. Although this method is a great way to produce some sulfur trioxide on a lab scale at relatively low temperatures, tin 4 chloride is dangerous to handle and produce, and toxic hydrogen chloride is generated. 
If this synthesis was reattempted, I think using an exact stoichiometric amount of sulfuric acid would be better to reduce sulfuric acid contamination in the final product. In the future, I am going to continue working on producing sulfur trioxide through the decomposition of other sulfate salts to find a safer, easier lab scale route to sulfur trioxide synthesis. So keep an eye out for those projects. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in a future video. Okay, bye.